My friends, if you've been watching the news, you will have learned that it appears that Iran or Iran has launched swarms and passels and sorties of kamikaze drones at Israel. But let me ask this question first. Why? Why do you suppose that happened? Why do you suppose they did that? I'm asking you, not that Iran would ever have any reason whatsoever. Why do you think they did this? This would be the first question I would want to know. This would be the first question. And how is it they're saying they're on their way, they're hours to go. We know they're on their way. Everybody knows here they come, they're on their way. But October the 7th was a complete surprise. Pearl Harbor, perhaps, as one of our morning friends said, you see what we're doing? We're asking questions. But if you ask the wrong question, <laughs> well, we don't want your questions. Just do yourself a favor and just shut up. You got it? We're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about a whole host of things this evening, dear friends. As I remind you, first and foremost, please like this video. Please so hit that little bell and subscribe. Subscriptions are key. Subscriptions, they love the subscriptions. It's your, it's, it's your worth. It's who you are. And that can only be done with your faith and love. And also to make sure that once you are subscribed, you remain subscribed. All right, dear friends, in one week, unless it, it, it might be over Monday, I don't know. You better hurry up because our good friends from preparewithlionel.com, the best, absolute best emergency food company in the world, has a special that ends then. So please, if you love food, and hate emergencies, listen. It's no longer a question of if something is coming, it's when. The only shock, the what, the how. While you still have some control, what are you going to do about it? Well, the first step is to go to my website at preparewithlionel.com. The next step is stocking up on multiple one-week emergency food kits from my Patriot Supply. Price at under $50, now's the time to buy in bulk. My Patriot Supply is equipped to help you prepare. They've helped over 2 million families already. These one-week kits with ready-hour foods provide over 2,000 calories every day. And they're sealed inside a rugged ammo can so they can last to up to 25 years in storage. So just grab it and go in emergencies. Get these kits for under $50 this week only at preparewithlionel.com. That's preparewithlionel.com. Com. My friends, I want you to answer this question because it's the most important question. You've got to ask why. Why do you think? Now, asking why does not in any way justify or explain why a country would be doing anything. Why? We, we don't care about Iran. What do they you know? They're evil, right? They're the evil empire. They're a bunch of theocratic terrorist thugs. But why do you think? Has it, did anything happen that might precipitate an attack on Israel? What do you think about that? Anything? Do you think anything might have done this? I'm just saying, not that, not that it's justified. No, no, no. Don't, don't ever show any form or any hint of justification of any type of visit. We're not saying that. But what we are saying is very simply this. Why do you think they would do that? What in the name of God would they do that? Do you think maybe, <laughs> Theo says, because Biden said don't. Do you think maybe the attack, maybe the attack on the Iranian consulate uh, next to the, uh, the, to the, to the uh, embassy in Damascus, do you think that might have been a reason? Do you think? Does that come into play? Is Iran supposed to say, don't do anything? Why? Well, we had it coming. Now, I'm not justifying this in the least, but you must ask the question. And how many of you friends, how many of you, dear friends, have friends who don't know anything about this? Who don't know anything about this? Who don't know anything about this? Now, 
I'm going to give you something. And this is, this is one of the things, this is one of the most, this, this is, this is one of the most incredibly difficult thing for you to do. And I want you to do this because I know you can, and you must be able to, because if, if you're going to be a citizen of the world, you're going to have to be fair. Remember something. If you ever find yourself saying something that is ne not necessarily in favor of anything that was done, let's say, by Israel, that does not mean, I don't have to say this, but I will, that you're anti-Semitic. It does not mean that. It does not mean you're anti-Zionist. It does not mean, if you say something, if, if you are against the policy of the United States, it doesn't mean you're anti-American. Please, do we all understand this? Do we all understand this? Is it possible? If you can say something against your government, not your country, your government, then you should be able to say something against the government of Italy, of, Italy, of Israel, if that's what you think, or anybody else. Do not suspend, do not abnegate, do not give up, do not surrender your rights as an American citizen to opine, to think, to speak, to, 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 to give an opinion as to what you think, okay? The next thing you must understand if you want to be aware of this is that this has no rules. This is something where you have to understand something from two different positions. Israel or Palestine, pick a side. Go ahead. If you think you're going to be able to negotiate both sides of this simultaneously, no. It doesn't work like that. Pick a side. Which one do you want? You can you you could argue and and I think you know I think you understand that the Israeli point of view has says they have the right to defend themselves. Hamas is a terrorist organization. October the seventh was a terrorist act. Uh, Hamas has basically taken over. It has contaminated itself. It it has entwined itself with all that is Gaza. And if you want to get rid of Hamas, you have to get rid of wherever it is. And if you use Gazans as human shields, well, that's the way it goes. Nothing personal. If you were an Israeli, if you were, I think you would say, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I want this country to myself. Would you want to share the country with somebody else? No. Can you imagine that if all of a sudden we had to share with the French? No. Now, you wouldn't necessarily be re requesting or suggesting genocide, though we will discuss that. If I was, I think, a regular kind of a, kind of a, I don't want to say right wing, but a pretty staunch Israeli, I'd say, this is ours. That's it. And if you don't like it, get out. Simply, we'll get along with you, but it doesn't seem that the Gazans and the Palestinians want to play ball with us. Plus, there are many uh, Israelis and many supporters who say, we were here first. We have biblical, not only that, we have the, the for, for, forget the Balfour Agreement, we have the UN, it's, it's decreed, it's over, it's moot, starry decisis, brace judicata, we're here, that's it. Shut up. Shut up. And if you don't like it, you should have thought about this before October 7th. And don't complain to us. Complain to Hamas. They're the ones. They're the ones who... Okay, you got that? All right. Now, Palestinians' point of view. This is real easy. Excuse me, we were here first. We're indigenous people. What's this UN business? Not only that, are you aware? Do you have any idea of the claims that have been made, the absolute claims of genocide, claims now, genocide, ethnic cleansing, and apartheid made on the part of Palestinians. They will tell you they've been hit with snipers, that th this has been going on for years, that Americans don't know anything about this. You don't know anything what you're talking about. And the Nakba to them is real. The catastrophe. And what they're saying is they they want to just move us out. If they, th this is our home, and they basically said, "All right, everybody, 
out of Gaza. Why? To get Hamas. Now, if you don't like the reality of this, if you don't like the reality, if you don't like the way that both sides are portraying this, if if you are unable to, it's, it's not really yours to take a side because it's not your fight, but this is what's going on. And in America, we know nothing about this. In the rest of the world, that's all they talk about. We know nothing about it. Nothing. Nothing. And we have people, we, we, we have one particular side, we have, let's say, the conservatives, and the, well, so the, let me explain this, the conservatives, Fox News, who are saying, Israel, whatever you do, that we'll, we'll sign on. Just, just whatever you want to do. It's okay. That's the way it is. You defend yourself. That's it. You got my signature. You got my John Henry. Go ahead. Do it. It's your thing. We stand with you. Whatever you want to do. You want missiles? We'll give you missiles. Want money? Whatever it is, it's yours. You're right. That's it. Only democracy in the Middle East. You're our friends. You're our allies. Screw them. Screw anybody. Ever since 1972 and Munich, that's it. All right? You got the Democrats. Weird. 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 They're not. They're not. They, they've never been on this. They, they, they're they're anti-Palestinian. To show you the absolute terror they feel about daring to veer from the official record. Look at look at AOC and where's where's uh, Ghislaine Maxwell? Where am I saying? Where's Rashida Tlaib? Where is she? Where is she? Where's the squad? They haven't said a word. Where's Elon Omar? What do they have her? They're threatening her. Now is the time for her. you think you 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 think she'd say aha? Rashida Tlaib, get out of here! Don't you push it. That Michigan undecided thing. Where are they? Where are they? It's easier to find out. Where's Kate? Kate Middleton. Do you hear me? Is there anybody listening? Do you under do you see what's going on? This is unbelievable. Where were the Democrats? They, they, I, I don't understand. I, 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 I am flabbergasted. I am gobsmacked. I am, I, it's the most fascinating story I have ever seen. There is no story like this. By the way, my dear friends, I'm going to give you this link. Please watch my piece on Joy Reid. Oh, it was a delight. I've got Joy Reid, or I, her show's called Read Out. The Read Out Show. I call it the Read Out of Her Mind Show. And there was a, this is the link. Please see it. It's a very good one. I break down her last, <laughs> the show. It's so bad. I haven't watched it. And I give you my critique of it. Please watch it at Lionel Nation. Tell me what you think. Now, this is this is the most beautiful thing in the world. Joe, what Joe Biden said one time, I think it was, I think it was, was it Menachem Begin? Where Joe Biden said, if there wasn't an Israel, we'd have to create one. I think it was Begin who said, who the hell is this guy? Who in the hell is this guy? He is one. Why, why he is a Democrat? Where you think this Democrat thing comes from? He lauded. He provided the the this the uh, eulogium for Robert Byrd. And was it Strom Thurmond? I think it was Robert Byrd. I mean, you've got to be kidding me. Where is AOC? They had to pin her down at a theater. She wouldn't say genocide. Now we'll get to that in a moment. She won't even. Lloyd Austin said, Well, I don't think there's any evidence of genocide. However, the senseless slaughter of men, women, and children said, Wait a minute. <laughs> what? Now, genocide, terrible word. I know many of you good people will say, I am not going to say genocide because genocide to you conveys, connotes, and inspires in your mind an idea, and imagery, that is so horrible. And some people think it, Israel cannot commit a genocide. It, that's ideologically 
and practically impossible for people who themselves have been the subject of this horror, who themselves have been the subject of, of, of human liquidation and genocide, they are not going to be involved in the very practice that basically inspired Israel in the first place. It's, it's, it's ideologically, intellectually, philosophically, and, and practically impossible for Israel to commit genocide that would be like um, uh, the African American, uh, the the the, Af- the uh, Black Hawk is committing slavery. It, it, it doesn't work. And and these other that's what people say. It, it's it's it, it does because they have this word genocide. Now genocide, for those of you keeping track at home, to give you an idea, let's listen to this definition. It's very weird. Genocide. I think it was a term. Penned in 1943. And it is a term of art. Okay? It means the intentional destruction of a people in whole or in part with the intent to do so. It's any of the five acts. Let me let me just give this to you. It's very very interesting. This is this is important. This this is this is what it is. Genocide is defined as any of five acts committed with the intent with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national ethnical, which is very interesting, national ethnical, racial or religious group. And these five acts were killing members of the group. All right. Causing them serious bodily or mental harm. Okay. Imposing living conditions intended to destroy the group. Preventing births. And forcibly transferring children out of the group. Victims are targeted because of their real or perceived membership of a group, not randomly. In whole or in part. The, the 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 killing of people in whole or in part a national ethnical racial or religious group was vietnam genocide did we kill in whole or part intentionally kill a national group I don't know if it was if it was ethnical. We weren't targeting ethnic, racial, or religious, but national. Dropping bombs, rolling thunder. Did did we kill members of the group? This was one of the five acts. Why 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 isn't that genocide? Could Hamas be accused of genocide? Yes. Think about this. It is the killing. Okay. It is the killing with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national group. Yes, I'd say religious. And I yes, either either Jews or Israelis. Yes, by killing members of the group in whole or part. Everything seems to be genocide. Think about this. You mean a group? What group? You mean a country? A group is Hamas a country? I don't even know how the hell this thing works. I when I read this, I want to say something. I don't want to to uh, uh, in any way stop or interfere with people in their use of the word genocide. But if you read it, I'm thinking, excuse me, everything seems to be genocide. Read this. What is war? When we firebomb, when we took out in Nagasaki. Remember who was it who said? Was it Eisenhower who said we're we're going to be the subject or subject to war crime? We'll be war criminals if they catch us. Do you know how stupid this thing is? How insane, insane it is for us to be talking about the rules of war. This this notion of war. That's a good war. That's not a war. Well, this is. Well, that's not in whole or in part. Well, was there the intent? Well, I don't know if there's the intent. 
they're showing people they're 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 using the statements of IDF soldiers leaders uh in their statements of basically liquidating either all or whole or in part of Palestinians. Did you ever hear what we said during Vietnam? Did you ever hear what we said about killing? Did you ever hear about us getting the gooks and Charlie and, oh my God. What was that about? We're going to go there and we're, I mean, we went there and we just, I mean, I, 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 this, this, the idea of applying the rules of the Robert's rules of order and etiquette to war, it's absurd. It's absurd. It's it's horrible. The only way you're going to win against the person that you that you are fighting is to destroy them, not wound them. This is going nowhere. But the other question is: is this our fight? Let me ask you a question. Now it gets closer to home. You want to pick a fight with Iran? Yes or no? You want to? You want to pick a fight with Iran? And if you do, you better finish it. You better finish it. You'd better finish it. You see, this is the thing about war. This is the thing about people. People, I think, they, they watch too many movies or something. They're sitting there and they're saying, you're giving them all this money. We don't have a beef with you, U.S., but don't even think about it. We send our battle carrier groups there. And you got the Houthis are saying, let us in. Put me in, coach. People don't even know who these are. The Houthis. Right now, as we speak, I promise you, I promise you, there are battle contingents contingencies, plans to scuttle to, to uh, uh, scuttle a ship right there at the, what do they call it, the gate of of, 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 of tears or whatever it is that this, the, to the Red Sea, they're going to go to the uh, Suez Canal. I mean, that's the Houthis. That's theirs. They own that. And if Iran wants to say, okay, we'll just shut down the Straits of Four Moves. We'll do it. Americans are going crazy buying gas. Twenty, I, 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 I am telling you, I am telling you. Do you want to do this, Heather West? Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Your kindness is so appreciated. I want you just to understand the truth. Do you want this? Do you want this? You see, we have this idea that these people are a bunch of weirdos. I know when you see like an Iranian general, you don't take him serious. You know, Soleimani, they love that guy. He didn't look like a general. He had a beard and he's just, a, they don't look serious. They're not really, they march funny and they don't have, I mean, we know they don't have SEAL Team 6. Oh, yeah? Really? And Hezbollah? Oh. You don't want this. One of the things that you don't want in war, whether it's a fight or a skirmish, first of all, you don't want bad weather. You don't want a territory you're unfamiliar with. You don't want to be in a terrain that's weird. You don't want to be in the mountains. You don't want to be in the jungle. You, you've got to know this area. That's why Afghanistan was so stupid with these these. Canyons, Helmand Province, and Kandahar. What are the, the, the sitting ducks? But what you really don't want is you don't want an enemy that fights because of their incredible, immense, huge, and colossal passion and love for their country. You don't want that. Not a love for their country, a love for everything. And people who have had it. Nobody ever, I love when people say this. One of the craziest thing is, why do these people, why did they, why did they, what was October the 7th about? Why would Hamas want to do that? This is what I'm saying. Okay, 
I'm going to leave now because <laughs> I'm talking to a moron. You don't understand this? And to understand it, to be empathic does not mean you agree with it. Remember during the riots, the Watts riots, the, the riots in Newark, and the, 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 the Rodney King. Do you know why they do that? Not, not do they have a good reason, not the justification, but do you know why they do that? Do you know why? Do you know why people protest? Do you know why they, do you know why people march? Do you know why people, do you know why Martin Luther King and Ralph Abernathy and a whole bunch of people and John Lewis and got their heads cracked open and just walked in unarmed against Bull Connor and the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Do you know why they did that? Do you know why they're pissed off? Do you know why they're so angry? Do you know why they don't recognize how good they've got it? Do you know what the Stonewall riots were? Do you know why they rioted? What are these people? What are man? Come on. If you don't understand this, if you honest to God can say, why would the October 7th, why would they do that? what's their beef? It means you don't know anything. You don't, you're not listening to what they've been saying. You've been so, not you, but you've been so hidden, sh sheltered, cosseted, closeted, comforted. You've been just, just pulled aside. You don't know anything. Most people think, oh, God damn it, are these Palestinians, what do they want now? What the hell do these people want? Would they just shut up? They, they, they still think it's Arafat or something. What do these, what's their beef? You know, why, not, why doesn't Jordan take them? How about Egypt? If you don't like it, leave. Does that sound familiar to you? Stand by for a second, my friend. Stand by for a second. This is a very, very important topic. And I'm so glad you're with me on this Saturday night. I appreciate it. But you know what? On a lighter and more comfortable note, I want to tell you about one of my heroes, a man by the name of Michael Lindell, and his company is called MyPillow.com. And use promo code Lionel, promo code Lionel, or MyPillow.com slash Lionel. Well, it's time yet again to hail and salute our great friends at MyPillow.com. And if you use promo code Lionel, you get a free gift. No purchase necessary. I know, I know, a free gift. Gifts are free. Okay, it's a tautology, so sue me. But listen to me. Now listen carefully. What are we talking about here? Down comforters, flannel sheets, Giza Dream bed sheets, my pillow 2.0, body pillows, waffle blankets, couch and recliner pillows, sheets, slippers, percales. I'm not even done yet. Towels, quilts, bedspreads, mattresses, mattress covers, mattress toppers, linens, kitchen towels, bathrobes, pet blankets. Pet blankets, bolster pillows, name it. Items to help you luxuriate and relax. And they're monster sellers, slippers, my slippers, slip-ons, moccasins. Think about it. What do they do at my pillow? What's their main goal? To make things real soft, plush, real comfy, comfy, or comfy as I say it. How perfect. So here's the link right now. Go to mypillow.com slash Lionel. MyPillow.com, promo code Lionel or slash Lionel, or call 800-645-4965. 800-645-4965. And watch how fast our good friend Mike Lindell answers the phone. MyPillow.com, promo code Lionel, simply and absolutely the best. You know, my friends, I love reality. I love reality. And let me, let me, let me just give you something. I was listening tonight to the story of American sign language and sign language in general. And there was a debate as to when sign language came about. And if you were deaf, born deaf, you had little things you would say, like in your, you, you, you were born into a hearing uh, uh, country, uh, family, uh, they would, would maybe point a few things to you and they would, you know, you know, this would, you know, you know, this, it was funny American sign language, you know, um, this is drink, but this is booze or something like that. I thought that's interesting. So if you're born deaf in a family, in a country, in a world, 
You never talk to anybody. You never talk to anyone. You never, you just, you could talk about food and hungry and maybe. You never have anybody to talk to. You don't discuss your ideas, your politics, your thoughts, your dreams, your faith, your loves, your hate, nothing. You don't have anyone to talk to. And that's the way you were before Lionel Nation. And that's the way we were before the internets. Think about what we're doing right now. 20 years ago on a Saturday night, you would have had to maybe talk to your dad or talk to a neighbor or maybe maybe write a letter to the editor or talk to a friend. That was it. But the idea of a communal group, we, we learned the sign language of truth and we're sharing this and we take it for granted. We're just used to it now. But before this, it was like being deaf and not knowing how to communicate. We didn't know where like-minded people were. We didn't know this. So think about this. This respect, the nature, and the beauty of what we're doing right now. And the fact that I enjoy this more than you do, but that we have this time to speak. And you can speak either to me, or you can speak to each other, or people later on who are listening live and whatever. So God bless you for that. Second, and I find this most interesting. There's a Joe, wait a minute, John McGuire, hold it, hang on, whoa, Bill, John McGuire, couldn't get higher, says, my sister was born deaf, we never learned sign language, wasn't done back then, but she could lip read and speak, well, pretty much normal. Excellent. Excellent. Did she have the ability, John, to express herself as fluently and as fluidly as one would think. Did she have that ability? Probably not. She, I'm sure she could communicate. I'm sure she knew what was going on. Communicate, but to enjoy language, that's languid, to, to enjoy the complexity of thoughts, to be able to enjoy I mean, it, it, it's. I'm, I'm sure she did a wonderful job, but without the ability to learn something that other people know, oh, it's. Uh, I met a couple on the subway one time, and I think it was. I think one of the couple, husband and wife, was deaf, and the other one wasn't. But they, but they were talking. They were asking me where how to get someplace. And I said, I must ask you, so what is it like being um, you know, married, whatever? And I forget who said it, but one of the things which when they were arguing, someone just turned off the light. And that means because they both sign, signing is over. <laughs> I don't want to quote, hear you anymore. I'm turning off the light. If I can't see what you're saying, I can't understand. I thought that was so interesting how they, they fought. There was a debate, not a debate, but a discussion on Joe Rogan as to which animal would win in a fight. One of the most interesting things it I want, I thought of you. Oh, and, and Lex, Lex was Lex Friedman. Lex Friedman was with this fellow. He was fantastic. Wait a minute. Johnny's back. John McGuire said, actually, she got language quite well. You could tell by what she wrote. What was funny, though, is when people learned she was deaf and spoke louder. Oh, yes, that's, that's, I'm sorry, that's not funny, but you're right about that. Same thing what happens, John, with when, when you meet people who don't speak English. Uh, they or or they speak with a lack or they're 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 trying and people speak louder as though as though somebody with a different language. Thank you, John, for that. There was a debate as to which was the the uh, uh, which which animal could win with a tiger, uh, with a bear or a gorilla or a lion or and. I forget the name of this fellow. He's a martial arts instructor. Very, very good. I forget his name. It's very interesting. And Lex Friedman, it's a great show. 
It's a great show. And he said, well, you know, uh, the ape is intelligent. And he said, uh-huh. And he was citing Joe Rogan. Well, you know, as uh, uh, an ape is able to uh, use tools and can involve itself in a, in a veritable litany of behaviors. I'm like, uh-huh. And a bear, I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, an, uh, uh, they're very strong. He said, okay, very strong. And therefore, I mean, this the strength. And Lex Friedman applied his own speciesist focus and bias. And he completely got it wrong. He said, well, let me tell you something about the gorilla. And, and there's a reason why I'm telling you this. You'll see at the end, I hope. He says, a gorilla is very, very strong, but they're easily, they don't get into fights. They can be distracted by and run, they'll, they'll run off by, uh, by other animals. They don't engage in fights. They don't do it. They don't fight to kill. They don't, interestingly enough, when a chimpanzee, when a chimpanzee uh, will, um, they are, they are so brutal. They will rip your, to pull your fingers off your face. And, and for men, they will rip your testicles off. I'm sure you've known a few women like that, right guys? Anyway. And the idea is that they don't want you to reproduce. I mean, it's, it's so, it's just fascinating, but gorillas, no, they're, they don't really, they're not fighters. Many things don't fight them. Bears are very interesting. Bears are very strong to an extent. They're, they have incredible endurance. I didn't know this. They can run for a long time and they will chase you down. But again, their whole thing is not, they don't really advance. They don't attack. But the lion, oh, the lion is so good. It's got incredible sight, great night vision. It attacks by stealth. Wonderful. It doesn't come out and surround you. It takes on anything. Water buffaloes, packs of hyenas, doesn't matter. It knows that if it hobbles back to the pride, the other ones will take care of it. So it goes out there to, to do its trick. Gorillas I mean, there's there's a certain degree of kinship, but it's a different story. Um, bears don't. Bears are solitary. They also can strangle and crush. And I mean, their their whole thing is not just. I mean, they, they make a long story short. They are the best killers because they are hunters, and they go after you. And the bears are kind of, you know, they eat their thing, but they're not, they're not, they don't, they're not into packs and they don't, they, they don't sit there with the Serengeti waiting for the, with the gazelle. They're very smart. Why am I saying this? What am I saying this for? And you're asking, what the hell is this guy talking about? When you understand the purpose of that exercise, you got to ask the right questions. Lex Friedman was applying his own bias as a human. Oh, they're smarter. They make tools. Excuse me. During a fight, the girl is not going to say, okay, let me take this stick. Just a minute. Hang on. I get this bamboo. Put this together. Okay, there we go. It's a nice little spear. Let me, just a minute. Let me sharpen the end. Yeah, that's good. Making tools in a fight? What are you talking about? He was applying this human predisposition to seeing things. It's like we see through anthropomorphic sometimes misconceptions, our own biases, our own thoughts, our own whatever it is. And, and it's, it's very funny. So when you look at what's happening, first rule, number one, what's their beef? Tell me what Israel believes. Tell me what the Palestinians believe. Number two, what are they really fighting for? Is it for land? Is it for honor? Is it for religion? Is it for family? Is it for pride? Is it for genetics? Is it what is it? 
Next, who's behind who? Nobody fights a war anymore. You see, the question is not who's who's you know there. Who's behind you? Who is behind Israel? We are Canada. I think some European countries. What about the rest of the world? Uh uh nope. Anti-Semitism? No. I'm, I'm sure it is in part. And what does anti-Semitism mean? What does that mean? If I advised Israel, I would say, I want you to learn something from American black social media types. Everything's racist. Everything. No matter what it is, it's racist. Please watch this uh, piece I did. That. I, I, uh, Joy, I don't want to say I destroyed, but I, I'm going to follow up on this Joy Reid. And the, the, I love those wigs. What is that? What What is that? Do, do, do you think that looks good? I'm just curious. I, I, I just... If I if I told Israel, do me a favor. Always, always, always just make people say, like, oh God, I, I is it is it but you can also go for anti-Zionist, anti-Semitic, and tie anti-Semitic into it. Cause you can say that anybody who dares to to oppose Israel is indeed opposing the so just do it. And in many respects. It's it's true. Anti-Semitism is a term which exists. There are people who have an absolute, fervent, diabolical, actual uh, disdain. Somebody said one time, and I thought this is very interesting, and I believe I have his named somewhere, I believe he was a Holocaust survivor, he says, in the old days, anti-Semitism mean people who didn't like Jews. Today, anti-Semitism means people Jews don't like, or something like that. It's, it's reversed. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's the the word is it's it's metal fatigue. There are many people who say I couldn't tell you the first because to me, when I think of anti-Semitism, I think it is about Judaism. I think it's about just like there are anti-Catholics. Um, I think if you're an Arab living in Tel Aviv, I don't think that's. Yeah, to me, I mean, maybe, maybe they have a wrong. I don't think Amer. I don't think Americans think of Israel as as being connected with with anti semitism. I think there are people who who believe in Judaism, Judaism, either the religion or the culture. There are people that I know who are Jews here in New York. I have so many friends who are Jewish, so many as you can imagine, and some are atheists. Some never. Ever, nothing, not even the high holidays, no nothing, but it's a cultural thing. So I believe, I absolutely believe there are people who despise Jews. Absolutely. They exist. There are people out there who despise black people. There are people who despise Asians. And a lot of these folks, you wouldn't believe the anti semitic oh my God, in, in New York, Crown Heights, the the dare I say the 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 uh, uh, animus between blacks and Jews in New York. Oh my God, in Brooklyn. Oh my God, remember Crown Heights riot. Oh, powder keg, Freddie's uh, fashion mart with whatever with uh, with Al Sharpton. I know this absolutely. Of course, this exists. Of course, it does. I don't think we're talking about that though. I don't think we're talking about that. I don't think we're talking about that. Anti-Semitism, by the way, is a very interesting anti-Semitism. If you really want to go back to it, go read the words of Martin Luther. Oh, my God. And it goes back, as you know, to the whole notion of who was responsible for the crucifixion of Christ. It goes back. And this is the, 
there is a there is an absolute. This is the most important thing in the world for you to understand this and how Pope uh, Pope uh, Pius the twenty no Pope John the twenty third Ron Colley removed the part of the of the um, Easter uh, procedure or the uh, right which talked about the perfidy of the Jews. Madame Stamp says, "Thank you, Lionel. I love listening to you. brings back to brings me back to my Jersey childhood." Listening to Cousin Bruce and WABC on my transistor radio, Shades of Happy. I really enjoy being here. Thank you for this. You that 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 you 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 melt my heart. Those days, I don't think people understand the notion of the 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 radio, the transistor. In that night, you could you could hear things from oh my god, because of Skip. It's a wonderful thing. Skip, how it bounces off of, you can get radio stations beyond the horizon because there's a skip. It's amplitude modulation. Hits the hits the clouds back down. I used to love to hear this. AM at the outer end and just maybe had that really, that little tiny ear. It was a first ear thing and you, it's wonderful. You have to turn it sometimes. You can always hear the rain, the, the the lightning in the background. If it was AM, at least in Florida, you could. I remember listening to Larry King at night. Art Bell. Larry King. If you understand, you have you have to become conversant with what people are saying. You have to understand everybody's position and be able to explain it to each side. There are people I know who say, I say, okay, now switch. Now defend, take the Palestinian side. Oh, I can't do that. No, no. I'm not saying you agree with it. Just explain it. No, I can't agree. You don't understand it? Well, I understand it, but I'm not going to say it. Why don't you say it? Tell me what it is. You, you have to be able to understand this. There's so many levels to it. I understand it. It's simple. Now, let me tell you one thing. Always think like the enemy. Just like I told you, this Lex, Lex Friedman uh, thing, you have to understand how, how uh, if you're going to go in there, uh, you do not want, somebody said, you want to be in a cage with either a, a, a lion or, a, or a, a bear. And the answer was, I forget the name of this fellow. He said, you want to go in there with a lion because a lion will kill you faster. And a, a, an adult ape will kill a thousand men. You cannot beat an ape. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can not. By virtue of the savagery of these things. The way they, they cannibalize. There was an ape, a woman, a, a woman, a, 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 a female who gave birth. And normally, you take your baby away. You never give birth in front of the rest. When she did, they cannibalized it. And when the men fight, when the men fight, they not only fight each other for the dominance, whatever. They want to kill the offspring for genetic reasons. There's a brutality, well, that you might consider to be brutality, but to me, it's just nature. It's just what the nature, what the natural world does. But here's what I would do. First, I'm Mr. Intel. What do I mean by that? I always want to create the illusion of something that's not true. Number one, I'm saying, do me a favor. Yeah, I want you to double. If I represented Israel, if I'm saying, look, I'm going to work with your PR, okay. I want you to put more of these death to America protests. Death to America. What do you mean? Death to America. Why do you want that? So that Americans will say, these Palestinian bastards tell it, what? Death to us. You know what? Screw you. Go, Israel. Finish the job. Next. Remember when they had, after October the 7th, they had pictures of the, they had pictures of the, of the, uh, hostages, and they put them on light poles. I don't know if they did where you are, but here in New York, they had them on light poles, and people come and tear them down. I would, if I were Israel, I would have people deliberately tear it down, put it on social media, and of course, people will jump into it, again, showing the absolute insanity of these palaces, because I know what's coming up. I know what's coming up. I always want to change thoughts. I want to be like Capra. I'm into propaganda. That's what I want to do. Then you get to AOC, you get to the squad, and you tell them, shut up. And by the way, once and for all, would you stop? 
please, please stop saying there's, there's stop saying there's an Israeli lobby. There's an Israeli lobby. Hello. Yeah. There's a gun lobby, maybe not that powerful. There's a climate lobby. There's a trans lobby. There's a black lobby. There's a there's all kinds of there's every you, name it. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? There's an anti-Russia lobby. Why do people run from that? Oh, there you go with your crazy Jewish lobby. There's a Jewish lobby. Yeah. Smart. They did this before. They, you, you know who's got the biggest lobby of them all? Big tech. Where do you think that let's get rid of TikTok came from? Zuckerberg. So do me a favor. Don't, don't insult my intelligence by, by suggesting that I'm anti-Semitic because I point out the obvious. Did you also notice something too? Jose Andres from the World Central Kitchen. Nobody gave a shit about the Palestinians unless two until two things happened. First, the flower massacre, and the second was three three cars in a convoy with big things on top, pinpointed. And Andre said, "All right, that's enough." He he it was one hundred percent. He is State Department. He is so mobbed up, so to speak, in shadow government, and oh. Deep state, he is, he is, he is so mobbed up, it's not even funny. He is, he is a proxy, he's an agent. But when they got him, he said, Hey, what's this all about? And they said, Watch it, Jose, watch it. Don't forget where your bread is buttered. You're one of us. Well, you know what? Screw you. And then he's kind of backing off. He's like, Wow. I don't think Jose understands how this thing works. I don't think he understands how it works. Now, somebody said, Why do you think, why do you think, and this is the interesting question. Why do you think Israel made such a mistake by hitting those three drones? You know what other people say? And if you think about this, you, you might say, oh, that's too dastardly. But it's not out of the, it, it, it makes sense. It's logical. They want to make sure the next, the next people, the next people who have the bright idea of bringing food there, this is what happens to you. So you know what? We got rid of UNRWA and we're going to get rid of this. We want you out. Get out. Leave. Stop this two-state solution business. Can we just, I'm not, I'm telling you the truth. And I probably would think the same thing if I'm, in, if I'm in, uh, uh, Israeli. I don't want to share. I probably had it with these goddamn people and vice versa. And the Palestinians, I'm like, yeah, you're the goddamn people. This is, this is the way it works. Understand the thought. Antediluvian Doomer says, Lionel said Jewish Americans have political clout. Get him. Anti-defenders. <laughs> yeah. By the way, do you know what antediluvian means? Antediluvian? Before the flood, meaning old and ancient. Do you ever hear about the uh, gay mafia in Broadway, in the theater? You ever hear about that? You ever hear about that? Oh, 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 man. Talk about that forever. Oh, are you kidding? The, the, uh, the the higher echelons. It's not really a lobby, but just a group. Oh, come on! How about the ones in the in uh, the uh, folks in um, Hollywood? If you don't understand how things work, forget it. In New York, we try. We they had a, a couple of while back. They 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 tried the anti Italian defamation thing. Forget that thing never took off. Mario Cuomo said, I'm so sick, I hate the movie The Godfather because it depicts Italian-Americans like, would you shut up? Italian-Americans love The Godfather. They love this mafia thing. They love it. Don't tell me that. Everybody here wants to, everybody's mobbed up. Listen to all the, and I, I, I thought they hit kind of critical mass, but uh there's a lot of folks. There's a lot of folks, by the way. The boys downtown don't like necessarily all of these uh, people mentioning names from the past and who whacked whom and that sort of thing. Please, please stop. Please stop pretending that I don't know what I'm talking about. There are certain realities and certain things that I one time 
ask somebody the question. Here's a question. Do you believe, not in all circumstances, but do you believe that within the African-American communities, there are pockets or groups or strata, not all, but significant numbers, who discriminate against other blacks based upon either skin color or, uh, dare I say, what used to be called Negroid features? Do you think that exists? Do you think, because there was a time when everyone was, it, it was, this is in the 60s, the glory days, Afros and the Sheikis and going back to Africa and changing your name and everything else. And then there was this, all oh, this kind of talk about, well, you know, lighter skinned, do, like, wait a minute, what? You mean, you mean more white? Have you ever heard this? Edie says, yes, I grew up in Baltimore. Angelica said, of course it is. Of course it is. Do you know that in Iran, right around, right after, well, be, well, before, well, actually, right around uh, Operation Ajax, where we got rid of uh, Mossadegh, and there was this proliferation of Western, the number of Iranian women, you always saw women with, with these bandages. They, the nose jobs were just, I mean, you, it, it was the hottest ticket in town. And some people had bandages on who didn't have the, couldn't afford the nose job. Now, if you don't think there are people within different groups who have their own preferences, please. Have you ever heard Lace Curtain or Shandy Irish? Even then you talk about this. There's all this, this, it, it, there's a, look, it's a reality. Learn it. Learn how it works. Don't subscribe to it necessarily, but understand it. But here's what I would do. If I was, a, by the way, terrorist, that means the other guy. They don't call themselves terrorists. If I work for these people, I would do one of two things. First, I want you always to not be sure what the truth is. I want you to always, I want to control the way you think. On October the 7th, how did the greatest intelligence organization on the face of this earth, as far as we've been told, not know that they've been practicing for two years? Not didn't have drones, didn't didn't see this, didn't di found gates that were unattended. I mean, wait a minute, what? They knew about the drones before they fired up the drones. They said, they're coming. Wait a minute. How the hell did you know this? Because we're Israel. Well, how, mm? Everybody knew this. Here come the drones. And Israel's thinking, you're going to hit us with drones? Now we got to get rid of you because now we know you're coming. Drones are only uh, kind of limited, but that's okay. You got to ask questions like this. Do you remember during 9-11 when they asked Condi Rice, did you think, she, she said, oh, who is it? Condi Rice said, well, we, we had no, no indication or any reason to believe that people would commandeer planes and fly them into buildings, which is the story, right? Until Richard Clark or somebody else said, well, what about the PDB that said, Bin Laden planning to... Commandeer play. I say, what do you, you don't know what to think? So the first thing I would do is if I represent a group, I'm saying we got to make sure we have sleeper cells, sleeper cells, lone wolf. We got sleeper cells everywhere. Do me a favor. Teach the United States a lesson. Wait a minute. What? If you if Hezbollah or Iran pulls something here to teach us a lesson to get back. You're obviously, all you're going to do is give them the resolve pro-Israel against it. So if I represent Israel, I'm saying, do it anyway, blame Hamas. You know where Hamas was, they were created. You know the story about this. This is, this is look, I, I, I don't have to, I don't have time to uh, sometimes remind people that there are some very clever people who employ very interesting things and very interesting programs. And remember the words of Marshall McLuhan, who said that little lies are hard to keep secret, but big lies are easy because of your incredulity. 
Do you think there's any chance that we, that uh, Pearl Harbor was not contrived, but lie hop, let it happen on purpose? Any evidence? Of course there is. Of course there is. FDR, move the move the, the carriers out. Yeah, just what do you mean? Just do just move it. Why is that? Just move the carriers out. Thank you. Leave the rest there. Get, get rid of the carriers. Okay. All righty. Make sure the embargo against Japan is, you know, double tighten it up. Push them turkeyous gaudens and don't ever rule out Winston Churchill and his role in that. It's so interesting. It's so, but when you do this, you have to disabuse yourself of this nicey, nicey world of, well, that would be terrible. You mean they knew this? They knew it. Are you kidding me? There are people who sit back and they, they're, it to them is a chessboard. Okay, you move this, you move here, and you move here. Do you know that right now, as we speak, right now, there are conditions waiting for the next George Floyd to happen. Waiting, waiting. They've got their teams ready to go. Code blue, code. The next time there is a, and it's going to happen. I'm sad to say it's going to happen. There's going to be a police shooting. There's, there's a review committee. Mm, nah, that's not a good one. But the next time there's anything even remotely like George Floyd, right before the election, to remind everybody how racist Trump is, they will pick up the phone and give the, you know, the uh, the signal, whatever. The pastrami at the Carnegie is lean. Click. Gotcha. Code blue, guys. Pick up the phone. Call Ben Crump. We got another one. Get the to get Antifa on the phone. We got it ready. Two weeks tops. Get BLM. Now Patrice Collar's got to get a new one. Ready to go. We all set. They got the slogans, they got the social media, got everything. We're, we're, they're ready to go, ready to go. They know exactly, and if it can be time, not, not that they're going to do this on purpose, but the moment it happens, they're ready to go. You didn't know that? Of course you knew that. You're not stupid. Of course you knew that. Let me ask you a question. How different would the world be today without 9-11? What would nine eleven? What would the world look like had there not been nine eleven? What would what? Where would we be? What would the music industry be without the Beatles? It's a good question. Assuming there would be no, I ask this question because I was here in New York and I ask, and I can ask a question. Assume after the these planes flew in, what what if those buildings did not fall? What if somehow through miraculous I don't know what they just they got to, there's just a plane in there. Would we be in Iraq? Would we be in Iraq? What would happen? Would we have the Patriot Act? Would we have this? Would there be, but I'm just asking. The answer is no, of course not. After the, after the first World Trade Center bombing in what, 93 or whatever it was? Nothing really happened. You got to ask yourself, what is it that, what, what is it that certain things? Emmett, Till change things. The social uh, civil rights workers in Philadelphia, Mississippi, changed everything. What, what would happen had there not been that little girl running down the streets in Vietnam with her skin pouring off because of the napalm? Where would we be if there wasn't that image? Where, where, what, what would happen? There, there are things that you always have to keep in mind. You must understand human behavior. You must understand the rules of war and the rules of engagement and engorgement. And you have to ask yourself, what is it that makes people fight? Just like when you talk about fighting a, a, a bear versus a lion, who has, and let me also tell you something. One of the biggest jokes, one of the biggest jokes, and I say this with all due respect, is the American military. Let me explain. They are the finest people. 
the best fighting. You remember when somebody said, I don't know who's going to, I don't know who's going to start the next war, but the next, the next war will be fighting with sticks after an atom bomb or whatever, nuclear bomb. I would love to sit down and say to the great SEAL Team 6 folks, my friends, I thank you for your service and we're going to keep you here. But the guys that scare me is somebody who can bring down a grid pattern immediately. Somebody who by virtue of can just wipe out all wealth. Just wipe out wealth. What if tomorrow every bank, every, every, every account, there is no money. You have no money. You have numbers in your account. And if I could go and say, watch this, I can put that number. And if assuming no audit caught it, audit caught it, you've got a million dollars in your bank account. That's it, because that's how money's transferred. There is no money. So if tomorrow everybody at JP Morgan Chase, all the accounts, Citibank, wiped out, gone, what would happen? You're gonna put them together? You're gonna put you're gonna go back. Is there a backup? Maybe you do. I'll get that one too. There is no money. You go to ATM. There's no money. There's no nothing. Where is it? I don't know. But I had it. You had what? I had my money. No. You had numbers. You don't know. Who, who is this fellow? I've got a friend of mine. Uh, he's a wonderful... Let me see. Who who is the oh Alan Watts? Alan Watts. Remember Alan Watts? And I've got a uh, this thing. Alan Watts said something that my friend. Oh, let's give him a name. I don't know. Call him Vinny. And Vinny, I think, was quoting Alan Watts, who said. What if somebody, what if everything was measured in terms of its length? And this one was so many inches and this is so many inches. And then one day we just run out of inches, this artificial means of calibrating and measuring something by virtue of a system that really means nothing. Where I create the illusion that I'm actually, that something is there and you believe it. And then I say, no, I, we, we've run out of inches. We, 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 it's done. What do you mean? This artificial construct that I just created? Yeah, I, 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 I just uncreated it. So tomorrow there is no money. There is no money. And one of my favorite jokes of all time, if you think that nothing can happen to Bitcoin, or cryptocurrency in general. If you think that, oh, no, no, this is different because, see, it's decentralized and I've got a number and I can deal, and I'm dealing with you, uh -huh, and nothing can... Mm -hmm. This is called almost Bancor, cryptocurrency. This is, uh, this is um, Keynesian Bancor. You know, this notion of this cryptocurrency stuff. If you think for a moment, is, no, no, because I mean, uh, it, it's it's nice and it's wonderful, but the real war is not going to be fought with weapons, my war is with. Information and data. You can call it misinformation. My thing is the truth. And what I do is I will never lie to you for the enemy, but I will reinterpret the truth. I would love to be a coordinator of false flags and manipulation of reality. I'd like to be the psychologist in chief, like a Bernays. 
That's what I want to do for my country. And the first person I would go after would be my own government. I'd be a virus. I would want to destroy the power structure and put in actual, real, I know this is this is pipe dreams, but real, honest to God, patriots to come in to serve in representative capacities. You serve one term. No, <laughs> we have you have term limits. That's it. You can't lobby for whatever. You just cannot do this. I will violate in many respects concepts of the First Amendment because government is going to be the most unattractive thing you've ever seen. And the only thing you will get out of it is the ability to say, I serve my country. That's it. I would be the worst thing anybody's ever seen. And the first thing I would do is I absolutely would. It would be the day, if I ran this place, it would be the day that when people find out about Santa Claus, I don't want to use terms like bust your cherry, but the day of delusion is over. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what happened to Kennedy. Here's about UFOs. People are going to run into the street. They're going to say, thank you. You're welcome. Thought you should know. It's your government. It's your government. What's the issue? What's the thing you want to know? What's the main issue you want to know? Let's say I'm your, I don't want to say I'm God, but I say, I, my question would be, tell me who the actual shooters were for Kennedy. I want to know. Was, was it Lucien Sarti? Was it Badgeman? Was he out of Marseille? Is that him? Because they got him in 72. Was it March? Who were the actual shooters? Tell me the shooters where they were. I got to know that. That's all. That's it. There were eight shooters. There were eight? I mean, who knows? That's what I want to know. That's my thing. And let me also tell you right now. What may save the world. My what 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 may save the world, believe it or not, is artificial intelligence. When we band together to fight it back, when it takes over, I'd love to say, let's teach these. What if it's benevolent? AGI in particular. Let's do something to make them work together to fight us. Okay, good. So all of a sudden we say, that's enough of this. I need your help. All hands on deck. Yeah, stop this Gaza shit and Rafa. We got a big problem here. We'll get to that later. And of course, we'll never get back to it again. Ronald Reagan talked about aliens, not aliens, aliens. And the aliens he imagined would bring us together. I am telling you, I, I'm going to leave it at that because I know you think I'm nuts. But I see every, everything completely different. And I see war as being not what you think. And being the real patriot is going to be the destruction of organized government, professional government people. Jim Jordan is a professional government person. I don't trust him because he never does anything. So my friends, let me say to you, to antediluvian Doomer, thank you, dear friend. Madam Stamp, thank you. John McGuire couldn't get higher. My, my, uh, I, I hope your sister is with us. Please send her my best if she is, uh, and even if she isn't. And Heather West, thank you. Heather West, does that sound like a great, uh, that sounds like somebody from Batman. Heather West as Catgirl, or whatever you want to, whatever that one is. Um, let me see here. Oh, 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 that's it. Now, my friends, one more thing, please. Check out this video. <laughs> I'm sorry. I laugh sometimes with... Joy Reid, who's just so bad, she's actually funny. I mean, just. And remember how Joy Reid said these these uh, anti-gay uh, comments and then later on says, I, I, don't, I, I don't believe I said that. You said this. I'm going to do a video on this. They, they nailed her and she lied. Well, I, I just don't remember saying it. That's not the way I think. Okay, fine. I wish she'd say, yeah, I said it. Because if she said, yeah, because I think gay people are unnatural. I don't want them to be arrested or anything, but that's the way I think. I'm sorry. I think it's unnatural. So what? 
I think people would be so happy they would applaud, up to and including gay people. I know it sounds weird. Oh, and then this, I'll oh, forget it. Enough. That's enough. An hour and 50 minutes. You've got stuff to do. I've, I've taken too much of your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Adam and Flat and Wes and Jimmy and Jared and uh, everybody. God bless you. Whatever the hell that means. We'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. And until then, dear friends, remember this wonderful words, this final mention, my valedictory, my sayonara, my idios. The monkey's dead. The show's over. Sue ya. Ta-ta. <laughs>